Welcome to the Wingman Show. My name is Drew Brown. Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. My wingman, the guy who watches my back. And that's what this is all about. Somebody looking at my main man, Dr. Paul, what's up? Not much. I'm doing pretty good today. I woke up, uh, I showed up, and I'm here with you. You woke up, showed up, and paying attention, huh? That's right. Somebody said that. Number one. Somebody said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Somebody did say that. Well, guess what? We got a great, great show for you today. And you got a good wingman. Well, you know, we talked about Moose's diving 20 feet. Right. This is kind of kind of the same thing here. Your wing person. Yeah, yeah. It just uh sometimes no matter how big and powerful we are, we all need a little help sometime. Even the big and powerful need wingmen. That is so so true. Thank you, Doc. Well, all you Frequent flyers out there, people who listen to us all the time, thank you so much for being one of our frequent flyers. Any of you new listeners, come on and be a frequent flyer with us. We really, really appreciate it. And if you'd like, why don't you write us a nice little review on Apple Podcasts? We sure would appreciate that. The newsletter is here, and Dr. Paul's going to give some financial advice on it, and I'm going to talk about the facts in life. You know, I'll give one of the facts out. So guess what, Dr. Paul? And this is not a jet. This is an F4U Corsair that was used in the Korean War. And I was going to tell you a whole bunch about the airplane, but I really don't care about it because I want to tell you about what I went to see yesterday. I went to go see a movie called Devotion. And Dr. Paul, I'm going to let you say a little bit because I know you went and saw it too. But that, that, that movie brought up so many emotions. Dr. Paul, I'm going to tell you the truth. I cried throughout the whole movie, just like they busted his ass. And I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't much different. And I did it 40 years after this guy did it. And I'm telling you, it brought out emotions, Doc, that just haven't come to me before. Maybe I forgot them. Maybe I forgot how I was treated as a black Navy jet pilot. Or no, a black Navy wanting to be jet pilot. Uh, what did you think? I thought I, I thought it was a good movie. I saw it too yesterday. Uh, it did bring back some, uh, you know, quite a few memories. It was a pretty good setup. Uh, I recommend it. The movie's devotion. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Uh, the picture of your plane behind you, same behind me, is F four U Corsair. F four U Corsair. Not to be confused with the F four Phantom or the A seven Corsair. You kind of mix stuff around, but uh, it's. Uh, it was a premier fighter in World War II and Korea. They used him from like from 1942 to into the really into the 50s. Uh, I guess a tough airplane to fly. I actually I sat in one in the month of uh, July. Didn't realize I was sitting in one of the few that actually fly. There are only about a dozen flying in the world, and this was one of them. Uh, yeah, the, the movie was great. This was the featured airplane. It was a premier fighter for the Navy and the Marine Corps, particularly in the Pacific. Um, this is yeah. something I didn't know, Dr. Paul. They were flying jets. They were MiGs out there. They were flying against jets. Yes. In 19, yes, because the movie takes place in like 1950. Yes, they were, they were jets. And the Navy had like the F-9 Panther that was just kind of coming of age at that time. But uh, they just, you know, they didn't have a lot of production at post-World War II. So they had to go with what they had. So yeah, they were fighting. They fight against MiGs at times. Wow. Well, you know, sometimes you know a jet can go so fast that it can't turn as quick as something going slower. And sometimes, you know, when you fight another airplane, turning that radius is a lot more important than speed. Sometimes, however, there is a recorded kill of uh, an F four U Corsair against the MiG fifteen. It was by a Marine Corps pilot. Wow, that's great. That's great. Hey, I'd like to give a shout out. To my friend, Craig Bluebreaker, he just got in touch with me. He was a pilot with us at FedEx, Dr. Paul, and he's helping young people. He's asked me to maybe come and speak to some of them. And I just want to give a shout out because anybody who works with kids, I'll tell you what, if you work with kids, I believe in the end, you get a little bonus. I truly believe that. That's good for Craig. Yes. All right. World Cup news. World Cup news. Something's funny. Saudi Arabia beat Argentina. That's funny right there in itself. 
And the U.S. has no wins in the World Cup. But the U.S. has no losses in the World Cup. And the USA had two games in the World Cup, and they were both draws. They just drawed against England. So Wales and England, the England match was a score of zero to zero. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, they, no, they don't say zero to zero. They say nil nil, which no. I still can't. I still can't do that. It's, it's, it's you know, a zero to zero is what I think. Nil nil to so and so to nil. Let's say zero. Nil to me is like near, almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nil. Okay, yeah. but uh, yeah, well, at least at least during the game, you know, I think during one of the matches, uh, some years ago, the Iraqi. Uh, the Iraqi team didn't do so well. And I think they were tortured by uh, Saddam Hussein's sons for not winning. Somewhere. That's true. Uday Kusay. Well, that's almost like in Brazil. Do you remember in a World Cup, a goalie kicked the goal he by mistake. He kicked backwards, kind of, and he kicked a ball in his own goal. Yeah. And they killed them that night in a nightclub. That's right. I remember that. I remember that. Woo, baby. That's rock and roll. That's. That's fanatics. That's yeah. like, I love my Knicks and I love my Yankees, but I ain't killing nobody over them. Yeah, even most New Yorkers are not that crazy, though there are some exceptions. That's that's true. That's true. All right, I got a little known fact for you here, Doc. You know, both of us are very health conscious, and I've lost 30 pounds once, and I was thinking, where does that weight go? Does, does it all come out through number one and number two, should I say nicely? Or does it all come out through sweat? How do you think we get rid of 30 pounds once we like go on a diet or change our life and we lose all that weight? Where does that weight go, Dr. Paul? I have to figure it goes into the ether, into the atmosphere somehow. It sure does. The <clears throat> weight actually turns into carbon dioxide in our lungs and we breathe out that weight. And I think that's incredible, Doc. Wow. Hmm, through your breath. Through your breath, you lose that weight. Here's another little known fact that I know you'll like because we came up with it. You know, we were the only blacks in everything we did in the Navy. Every time we went to school, every time we were in a squadron, every time we did training, we were the only blacks. And, you know, in the military, you always take group photos of your squadron, of your training class, uh, my AOC class. And guess what's great about being black? You can always pick out your picture. You don't yeah, that's true. That's true. Far. Yeah, even if, even if it's not totally clear. Yeah, I'm going to put a couple of pictures of us up, okay? Okay. In our classes and see if the audience can pick us out. Yeah, process of elimination kind of makes it easy. Yeah, that's why you should be watching us on YouTube. You can see these airplanes. And I once again, thank you so much for doing that. Well, guess what, Dr. Paul? Also, I guess I'm getting clear. I guess I'm getting fired up because magic mind. I have continued my magic mind. I'm actually taking a week off because they say after four weeks of using it straight, go ahead and take a week off so your body doesn't kind of get used to it. Mm -hmm. And magic mind wants to be our sponsor again. For another three months. And I really think that's great. Thank you, Magic Mind. But, you know, Dr. Paul and I wouldn't push anything that wasn't good for you. And I promise you that. And the reason is we have enough money to live on right now for the rest of our lives. And we are financially secured. So we cannot get paid off. Yeah, it's a good product. Yeah, I'm on my 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 week long break, too, which is good. I think the effects, the positive effects are still there. Oh, uh, yeah. And I look you know how you can get it? All you have to do is go to magicmind.co, magicmind.co. And Dr. Paul, if you put in our code wingman14, you'll get up to 40% off. Yeah, yeah. Use the code wingman14 and save some money. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It sure is. And LeBron, you know, he a million and a half dollars for his physical health every year whether it's food or therapy or weights or putting good supplements in his body. So, you know, my son, you know, sometimes I get a little cheap and he said, don't ever be cheap with your own health. Don't mm -hmm. ever be cheap with the food that you put in your body. Don't okay. ever be cheap with something that can do something good for you. Money doesn't really matter right now. 
What matters is that I get the best out of my life that I can. And so I'm taking magic mind. It really works. Yeah, I agree. And when it comes for me, when it comes to food, tools, and books, I don't I don't scrimp. I don't mind spending for those things. That's good. My son also, oh, well, they're all here. My son, my daughter, my grandchildren. Oh, it's so great to have everybody here. But my son particularly loves sharks. And so I fell in love with sharks. And what I'm going to tell you right now is one of the most horrible things I could think of to happen to animals. Now, a shark like a pig, every part of the shark and pig can be used from head to tail. Every part can be used. And do you realize that we're killing over 100 million sharks and stingrays a year, mostly accidental? And that comes to 11,000 sharks an hour are being killed. And that's horrific. And one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life is when those Japanese fishermen catch these sharks, they cut off three fins and they they throw them back in the water and they just spin them all the way down and they implode. And that's horrible. Well, somebody's come up with something, Dr. Paul, and it's something they put on a fishing hook and like, you know, your automatic brights that come mm-hmm. on when it comes too dark, like in the car. Yeah. Well, this device actually sends out an electronic pulse and it stops sharks from biting these hooks by 91%. It is an incredible, incredible device, Doc. Yeah, I've heard that that, that technology has been developed for like a long time. Uh, yeah, I heard if you put certain electrical pulses, it might repel them. Uh, I think the Australians were were doing some research on that. And they, they were able to do the same thing. It didn't help all the time. I think they use it against tiger sharks and great white sharks. And it said it deterred them like, you know, like 90% of the time. So maybe that's something you could put on surfboards and maybe a a belt you can put on or something in your swim trunks. Or maybe that's a good thing to sell. Shark-proof swim trunks and uh, (laughs) what the that would be a pretty good market. I just thought of something. Maybe you should stop talking about it and you and I will do it. That's right. That is amazing, my (laughs) dear. I never thought about that. Yeah, forget about surfboards, maybe fishing poles, everything. Hey, they'll say, hey, what's that in your swimsuit? That's and right. Say, well, it's a pulsating device to keep sharks away. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> That's a good one, Doc. Well, since you're so smart, how about this one? Instead of throwing garbage away in Nigeria, young people have figured out how to take trash, and I don't mean food trash, but just remnants from the street. And they had a fashion show. And if you're watching on YouTube, I will show you some of the designs that these young people did. You know, we're tired of talking about bad stuff in the world. And the Wingman Show is here to bring us a little joy and a little information and let everybody know that life is good. But these kids have found something to do with trash, and they call it, believe it or not, a trashing show instead of a fashion show. I've I've never heard of a trashing show. That's pretty pretty creative. Now, I know Nigeria is a big, uh, it's a member of OPEC. And they have a lot, they do have a lot of pollution and they have a lot of oil pollution. And I'm, and I was always thinking liquid, but there's a lot of people and there's a lot of trash building up too. And uh, it's one of those places where you have, you see kids going through just giant mounds of trash, that, you know, where there's nowhere to put them, or they may have accepted it from other countries. Sometimes other countries ship their trash for someone, some so-called third world peoples to deal with. And sometimes they reject them. Uh, I guess, isn't that, was that really a show or is it like a protest? I'll tell you what, I didn't bring awareness to me. It looked like a show, but I would imagine it might've been a protest. I thought they put it in the ocean. Yeah. I think they got a lot of like a lot of stuff on land too. You know, I've never, I've never been to Lagos and the other big cities, so I don't know, but it's the most popular. So I think so far it's still the most populous, um, African country, Nigeria. Wow. Well, how about this, Doc? Let's get on to a new subject that I love, and that's medicine, because my son is a spine surgeon, my daughter's an attorney, and always people say, oh, good, they can take care of you. And I always say, no, I don't want to be sick in jail. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) with Drew, let's talk about medical a little bit. 
cancer has been ravishing people for years. And they just found out a new medicine that can really help with cancer, Dr. Paul. And guess what? That medicine is called kindness. And then you, you think, what are you talking about? What do you mean kindness? Kindness actually, they have proven, actually helps with most medical problems. And what is kindness? I copied it, I bolded it, and I want to read it to you. Kindness is just deep listening, deep listening, not just light listening, really listening, and empathy, and timely care, and generous acts, honesty, and support for family caregivers. That's what kindness is. And they have shown that kindness is helping kids adults, elderly, with medical problems that some medicines just can't touch. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting because in in a related conversation not too long ago, there was a doctor we were in conversation with who said his best patients were the ones that entered in with a positive attitude, had faith in the doctor, and they're going to do everything that was said without, you know, a lot of resistance and hee-hawing and questioning. And uh, that that goes along with what you just said, because that was actually from Dr. Drew in a conversation that you weren't a part of while you were roasting marshmallows. That's true. How about that? Well, you know, my mother-in-law, God bless her, she had cancer. And she, you know, they're from Mississippi and Memphis, but my my mother-in-law actually had this attitude when she her first cancer and she had a mastectomy. She thought the doctors were making it up and they just needed money to build more hospitals. And so she had an attitude where she wasn't really that sick through radiation or chemo because she was kind of thinking, ah, this is really nothing. They're just doing this to make money. And it's amazing how she came out of that cancer treatment mm-hmm. just with her mind thinking something different. Right, right, right. Well, that's good. Yeah, your your mind has a has plays a role in just about everything. Uh, it's athletic performance, school performance, a lot of things. If you're full of doubt and questioning, you don't do as well. You don't do as well. Now it's time for a wingman show PSA public service announcement. Fact number ten: Treat others as you want to be treated. Treat others as you want to be treated. That is a wingman show, PSA. You know, Dr. Paul, I've said this, and I mean it. I know the answer for world peace, and it's what we just talked about. It's kindness. You don't have to agree with people. You don't have to agree with them, but you always can be kind. Yeah, people, uh, it's harder now. People talk at each other. More so now, and not talking to each other. Everyone's trying to get the the, the sound bite or the, the 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 quick closing comment, the snippy comment, a lot like show business. But that's not how real life works. We're we're in a constant ebb and flow, and it's not just about you know put down or playing the dozens or a quick joke when it's something serious. For kids, it's okay. But a lot of times adults are doing that too. They're just saying little 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 smart ass comments here and there. And that that kind of that gets that gets weary and people stop listening and they start thinking other thoughts. And sometimes those thoughts can get pretty dark. Yes. And Dr. Paul, that's perfect because we just said kindness. The first one was deep listening. Mm-hmm. The next time you listen to a friend or a partner or somebody that's talking to you. Try deep listening. And that means not thinking about what you want to say while they're talking. Actually, a Buddhist monk taught me that. They said, when somebody's speaking to you, listen to what they're saying. Pause. Think about what they said and then answer. The problem in in America, you'd never get to say anything. (laughs) That's true. That's true. I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to see how, how the monk got you to be quiet for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did go to a monastery in Burma, Katrina and I, for seven days, no talking. I meditated nine, ten hours a day. And here's the little secret that everybody doesn't know. 
there's no rule that there's no talking, but everybody is meditating. They're into their own thing. So talking to somebody is like pushing them, bothering them. Now, mm-hmm. if you need, if there's a fire or you had to go to the bathroom, you didn't know where it is. Of course, you could ask somebody. But just saying, hey, how you doing? Not in a time of meditation. So it's not that you're not allowed to talk. You don't even feel that you want to talk. You don't want to disturb others. So let's talk about this, Dr. Paul, because this kind of pissed me off, to be honest with you. We try not to talk about bad unless we can bring something good out of it. Well, there was a football player, an ex-football player who just killed four other football players in a college. And that's not what I want to talk about, but I want to talk about maybe why. And that's because it was said that he'd been bullied. And I will tell you something. This is a new day. This is not back in the day when a bully, you know, kind of messed with you and maybe you could punch him in the eye and that'd be the end of it. Back, remember when we were kids and they said, I'll meet you at the flagpole, you had a fight. You won, you lost. If you won, you won. You lost, you lost. But it was next day, you probably you go on. Yeah, you go on after that. You, just keep going. you go on. Well, there's no more of that. There's yeah. no more losing. I will kill you. That is the mindset. But continuous bullying of people. I'm telling you something. These bullies, because we have grown up in a new age with all the video games, all the AK-47s, I mean, we're just inundated with weapons and, you know, on television, it's just all around us. They're not scared to pull triggers no more, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, like, people who get bullied are not sometimes on the spectrum, Dr. Paul. And that means they're not really socially inept all the time. They could be socially awkward. And I'll tell you something, you be careful who you're bullying. First yeah. of all, bullying is the worst thing you could do. You're such a punk if you're a bully. Such right. a punk. Right. Well, if people say, you know, hurt people, hurt people. Uh, I know it's just wow, that was good. Say that again. Hurt people, hurt people. It's not original. I heard it on a show somewhere. But I said, you know, people who are hurt tend to hurt others as opposed to coming out of the clear blue. So, you know, how do you break that 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 chain? Because the most of the bullying I hear, it, it it ranges in age from the very young, from like, you know, kindergarten to people who are like about 40. So if we go, if we go back 40 years from 1980, we're talking about just the beginning of video games and computers and that electronic way of, of interacting with anything. And now we interact totally. We're, we're, we're doing this podcast electronically. It's a big part of our lives. Audio and video. The internet, the whole deal. So that is a way of life. So it's not a matter of, oh, back in the old days. That, that's, that's irrelevant. You're not in the old days. You're, you're in today. <laughs> you're in today. And we have to learn how to manage today better uh, <clears throat> by looking at uh, particularly our, our, our mental health and uh, how we deal with uh, conflict. So we, it's not, we can't just go back to 1942 when the, uh, the, the F4U Corsair and the Grumman Hellcats and all that stuff were going on, old movies. You know, we're, we're, we're dealing with it today. That's incredible, Dr. Yeah. Paul. How about some good news about pilots? How about a Southwest pilot did a really good deed? A passenger left their phone at the gate, and some kind of way, they actually stopped the airplane. One of the service representatives ran out of the gate, and I'll show a picture of a pilot leaning out the window to get the person's phone. What a nice way. What great advertising for Southwest Airlines. And, you know, sometimes they get the shaft when it comes to public opinion. Yeah. But what a nice thing for somebody to do, don't you think, Doc? Yeah, well, that, I guess the, the, the pilot, the captain, was was a wingman to someone else. I, I had a similar experience, actually. And it happened in Singapore. Uh, leaving the hotel, a little bit rushed. I left my phone in the room. And I didn't realize it until I sat down in the cockpit just getting set up. I said, and I thought, I said, you know, I did oh leave God. it. I don't remember having it. So, you know, we had a little time. So I told the ramp guy, you know, call the hotel. Maybe I'll be back. And he sent it to me. You know, long story short, we had like like 45 or 50 minutes ready to block out. Yes. About six minutes before, the phone was, was placed in my hand. 
the cab driver we have, uh, what was his name? Great guy. They they got in touch with him. He went, got the phone, released it, got it back to me about five or six minutes before pushback, which was which was incredible. I thought that'd be impossible because it's not like the hotel is not next door. It's like 20 minutes away. And they they put it together and uh, got it done. I appreciated that a lot. I gave him a very big tip when I when I came back through there. But uh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's really nice. And, you know, this show also wants to highlight there are so many good people. Actually, the good people outnumber the bad 10 to 1. The problem is some of these bad people get they're like squeaky wheels. They're the only ones you get to hear. The rest of the wheels just work when they're supposed to work. And most of the world is kind and is nice. We just, I'm sorry to say, the news doesn't grab onto that. Like you and I, every week, we search for these stories, and it's not easier. Right. If we wanted to talk about killing and murder and bombing, boom, we do the show in 15 minutes. Correct. But we don't. We want to bring something good to everybody. And my friend Mike Proc said it, and I'll never forget it. I feel better after listening to your show, and I like that. Well, that's good. So before we get to our wingman, we love this. You and I really loved it, but you especially because of the engineering degree you have. But STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM is hard for everyone. Grades ultimately aren't what matter. Curiosity and perseverance matters. And the person who wrote this just put a landing vessel on the moon or is going to, they're planning on it. And they said their grades in college were not that great, mm -hmm. but they never stopped and they never stopped persevering and they never stopped being curious. And now they have a very high paying job at NASA, meaning out there, grades are not the end all. To me, grades sometimes just means you have a good memory. Because after a test and I regurgitate all that stuff, I usually forget everything that I ever regurgitated. But you want to hear something funny? The stuff that I got wrong that I had to retake or the stuff that had to be explained to me, how about that's the stuff I remember? Yeah, because you spend more time in it. So, I mean, tests, you know, tests are important. They do measure measure competence to a degree. But that's just the beginning of anything. Even if a person has got a black belt in Mars, some whatever martial art, typically that means that now you're ready to be a beginner. Now you're ready to be a real, a real student. It's not the be all end all. We think in terms of completion, sometimes you're really just at the beginning. Uh, That's right. Like him and me, you know, some people are late bloomers. It takes a little while. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal was a professional basketball player, hall of famer, well-known, but not known as the uh, best foul shooter. He made it, made jokes about it. But still, he perfected his craft and was dominant in the areas he was dominant. He didn't just stop. I don't hit. I don't hit foul shots very good. Made a comedy routine of it, and uh, yeah. Now there's a commercial. Well. He does the Papa John pepperoni, and he's playing everybody. And he's one playing of, everybody. Yeah. One of yeah. his characters said, "If the rim was as big as that pizza, maybe you'd have made some foul shots." There you go. He makes fun of himself. So yeah. you know, he's he's done okay. He's done. Okay. I've always wanted to ask you this, Doc. You ready? Yeah. Who is smarter, the kid who has a 90 on the math test or the kid who fails the math test, retakes it, and gets 100? Ultimately, who knows more math? Well, I'd say, I don't know. He, You know, it may be the same. He's just better at the taste, spend more time at it. The answer might be who's smarter is like maybe they come in even. And this guy here didn't say that grades don't matter. What they said, ultimately, they don't matter. That means in the end, nobody's asking you for what grade you have. They're asking you about your performance. They're asking you what ideas, what concepts, what thoughts you have. They don't ask you what your high school grades are. Because once it's just like this. Once you graduate high school and you enter college, you are no longer a high school graduate. You are now a college student. I tell kids this all the time. You can change your life immediately by entering college because you go into an entirely different category. You go into now I'm a college student. Correct. And from there, you know, you become a college graduate. And when you go to get your master's or your doctor's, 
Nobody asks you about your high school grades anymore. Mm-hmm. When you get your ma- when you go from master's to a doctorate, they're really not looking at your undergrad scores anymore. They're looking at the last thing you did. Right. So curiosity and perseverance. I love it. Doc, yeah. can you tell us about a wingman today? Here's a wingman. I was telling you, you know, sometimes even those who are the most powerful get sick or get trapped or have a problem and need someone to bail them out. Well, this wing, this week's wingman is actually a group of firefighters in Saldatna, Alaska. And the subject, remember last week we were talking about the moose, you know, moose can go underwater, dive like 20 feet, hold its breath for like 30 seconds or a minute and get some plankton and come up and, and they swim and all this other stuff. Well, sometimes even as big and powerful as they are, they need help. And one day somewhere in Saldatna, there was a, a baby moose that was uh, eating on some vegetation near a house. And the moose f- kind of lost its footing and fell down into like an open area into a basement, smashed in the door. And the moose is inside this house. Mm. Moose can't get out. Moose doesn't know how to get out. So the owners call the authorities and they decide to go in and they tranquilize the moose. It was a baby moose, weighed about 500 pounds. And the moose was tranquilized, not 100%, but enough, where it wasn't doing anything. And the next thing, okay, now how are we going to get this moose out of here? It weighed about 500 pounds. So they got these, like, some kind of uh, litter, some kind of stretcher that's used for, like, obese people. Ambulance services use them a lot. My wife used to do some stuff in the ambulance service. People were like gigantic. You know, what do you got to do? What are you going to do? If you're here? Well, anyway, they got one of these things for these gigantic people who can probably weigh as much as this moose or more. Now that I think of it, and <laughs> they got the they got yeah. Remember Dick Gregory walking these guys? You know, they were like seven hundred pounds, and he get them down to like five hundred. Anyway, uh, just through walking. So they got this thing under the moose. The moose is kind of you know groggy there. And it took six of them, and these like these are not little guys; they're six very large guys. And they got this thing; they bring this thing up through the house, you know, and they uh, get it outside. And it kind of they they have to give it some uh, like anti tranquilizer to wake it up more. And the moose gets up. The moose gets up and heads back to where <laughs> heads back to where it was before it fell down the first time. And they're waving, like, "No, don't go there!" And the thing eventually. <laughs> Eventually it goes off. They thought they'd have to do it again. So the wingmen this week are the firefighter, group of firefighters in Saldatna, Alaska, who rescued a baby moose, a 500-pound baby moose who's out swimming and diving and uh, snorkeling right now as we speak. Hey, you know what I just thought of? Maybe our sponsor's Magic Mind. Maybe we could talk them into every time we have a wingman of the week, maybe we can send them a pack of Magic Mind. That would be a like a little, a little, yeah, like a little three bottle pack, a little sample, a little sample thing of Magic Mind. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. If that, they could afford the postage, sure. That's excellent, Doc. You're the best. You're the bomb, and I'm so glad that you're my wingman and I'm your wingman. And always, thank you so much for looking after me and everybody out there. Thanks for being there. We really do appreciate it. And Doctor Paul, as always, I do pray for peace. I do pray for peace and everybody stay hopeful. Thank you once again, Dr. Paul Thompson, my friend. Thank you for your love, your time. And that's something that we won't ever get back. I want to thank all the listeners, too. Thank you so much for doing the show, Dr. Paul. We're jamming. Well, thank you, Mr. Drew, for inviting me on. Always good to talk to you. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast or any of the podcasts. If you're looking at YouTube, uh, they say smash the like button. Don't smash it. Just press it gently and refer to use as a link to all your friends. You can also look at us on our website, wingmenshow.com, W-I-N-G-M-E-N, show, S-H-O-W.com, all together, wingmenshow.com. And we hope to see you in the future. Thanks again, Mr. Drew. Oh, you're welcome. And we're still floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. May there be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men and women.